Okay, let's get comfortable because we're about to have a very long, interesting talk. I just got this new iPhone and I, it, it doesn't like my face. Okay, so what we're going to do today is going to be a great little funnel activity. I got like a memory notification on Instagram that it had been a year since I had done my last q and I went ahead and just asked you guys to ask me some questions on there. I just have so much to talk about and a lot of the questions are going to end up going a lot deeper than you probably even meant when you asked them. So I'm just going to pick like a few of like the major questions and then we're just going to kind of do like a little update because I have so much that has been going on and so much of that has changed in the past few months that I haven't actually been able to like sit down and talk about and things that like I don't want to talk about so I've been putting it off and pretending that it doesn't exist when it does and um, yeah it's just it's, it's just been kind of hard but we're gonna get real right now and um, talk about everything because I mean, that's what I do. <laughs> so we'll start with a simple travel question, and that is, how do you stay in shape while traveling? Um, I don't stay in shape. <laughs> the kind of traveling that I've been doing lately is like I'm always moving around, and um, as you'll know, I spent the past couple of months over in Europe. Um, I was with Michael and we were basically like in a new city every two days. So we were moving constantly. So obviously when you're traveling to all these new like countries and new places, like the one thing that you really wanna do is try their food. We were just getting whatever we want, like burrata everywhere because we love it. Now mostly it was like sushi everywhere, but like of course we would try like the local food. Obviously I recommend trying new things and experiencing the culture in different places, but also I feel like a lot of it, um, staying in shape was due to all of the walking that we did because like in these European countries like this, everyone is if fit, they're in shape because they walk everywhere, they ride their bikes everywhere, as opposed to like where I live where you have to get in your car and drive to everywhere that you want to go. Keeping a more like active lifestyle that and like pulling luggage around everywhere we went. Yeah, that kind of balanced it out. And someone asked where do I plan to travel next? Um, you know, <sighs> sorry. So much has like happened and I I came back a lot sooner than I expected. I've been in this place for the past month or so where I'm like, okay, like the travel is over. It, it's time to like settle down. And so I've thought a lot and I was going to move to Dallas. This is like my home base, like where my parents are. All of my belongings are in a storage unit and then I have a couple of suitcases here. But it's not like I've set up like a place that I live here. So it, it's kind of like an awkward situation because I'm, I feel constantly like I'm in between places, but right now I don't know where the next place is I'm going to go. Just because, <laughs> sorry. So basically like being here right now is kind of an unexpected thing. So I'm still trying to kind of like figure out where I'm gonna go from here. Um, I still wanna do some traveling just because it ended sooner than I expected, it doesn't mean that it has to be over. And I just recently realized that when I decided that I'm not going to move to Dallas. I never like expect it to be a full long term, like this is where I'm gonna spend the rest of my life. Just because um, I grew up with my two best friends, um, Haley and Caitlin. Caitlin's my sister, but we were like the three best friends. Haley was our next door neighbor when we were in like, when I started fifth grade, sixth grade. So this summer would be our 13th year being friends. We grew up together. Um, me and Haley went off to college and lived together. Um, me and Caitlin moved to another city and lived together after that. All of our plans like changed. I wanted to travel the world. Haley wanted to move to Denver, so she moved to Denver. And Caitlin wanted to move to Dallas, so she moved to Dallas. So we're like all split up. And um, it, it's good in a way because I have those places that I get to go and visit. But I was trying to figure out like, okay, well, where am I gonna move? Like, what's my end plan? And um, it's, it's not either of those places, but those are their cities. And I wanna find a city that's my own city. And I'm like 90% sure what it is. I'm just not gonna talk about it on here yet. 
um, I'm gonna keep that part private a little bit longer. But as of like traveling, I'm not entirely sure yet. I don't know, I thought I was gonna be spending a lot more time in Quebec, but I'm not, so anyways, we'll get to that. <laughs> And then I got the question, did you move to Europe? I lived in Germany with my brother and my sister-in-law and their family. And I was planning on staying there longer than I did. But, um, well, I guess this can just kind of go into the other questions. I got a lot of this next. Are you and Michael still together? How did you and your boyfriend meet? Still waiting on the boyfriend tag. And then my all-time favorite, are you married? <laughs> This. <laughs> I did not expect this video to get me like this. It's okay because I've gotten really good at crying without ruining my makeup. <laughs> okay, so no, we're not talking at all, actually. <laughs> we were gonna do the boyfriend tag. I wanted to do it like while we were traveling because we had stayed in some like really cute Airbnbs and stuff. Um, but something like always came up like every time we were gonna do it, but it's good because by the time I edited everything We were not together anymore um, So we actually We actually broke up like Maybe a week after he left so basically like I don't really know how much y'all know because I don't know where you fall all you follow me at I wanted to travel for a very long time like I was planning this whole trip basically since my brother moved to Germany and they've been there for two years. So I wanted to kind of like go and have my home base like there with them and then I can go off and travel to all these different places by myself. And then like right at the perfect moment, um, a year ago, Michael came into my life and we talked for a few months and then I like it was right at the part where I was putting my plan in action. So we started talking October 29th when I drove up from Ottawa to Quebec City. And like we weren't expecting anything to happen at all. And then all of a sudden it just like fell into place and it made so much sense. And when I left after a few days, like, I just remember it was like the best three days of my entire life that I was there. And he said the same, and so we were like, shit, like, what's, what, what is this? What's happening? Um, because we both didn't really expect it. We talked for a few months. I didn't end up seeing him again until he came over here in the end of January. It was for Caitlin's birthday. And then a month after that was when I started the traveling. So he knew from the very beginning that this was my plan. I wasn't sure what city I wanted to live in. I wanted to go out into the world and like try and work for myself completely. Basically that was my plan. Like I wanted to not have a plan for a while and I saved up a lot of money over the past few years so that I could do this plan. I just needed to get all of that stress off of myself that I was feeling at the time and like relax and have it all come to me. Like I just wanted it to all come to me like freely. February 23rd was my last day at the salon. But then I went to the Dominican Republic with him. I flew from there to Denver to see Haley. I flew then to Quebec City, and then from Quebec I flew home, got my car, did a road trip with my dog up to North Carolina to see my family, spend some time with my grandparents. My cousin got married. Me and Maddie drove up to DC because Michael had a show there, he's a music producer. And then we did a road trip back to Texas. Dropped off my car and my dog. Two days later, flew out of Austin to London. He knew that I was gonna go over there and he was like, hey, well, I'm gonna go over there for a music tour, so let's just do it together. So we were in London, then we went to Paris for the first show, then we went around France a little bit more. Um, Nancy, Metz, Lil. We randomly went to Spain Madrid because he has family there and his dad went so we met him there then we went back to Paris and we went to Amsterdam Berlin 
then we went to Rome, we went to Ostia, the beach in Rome, and then we went to visit my family in Germany. And then after we left there, we went to Brussels, and then we went back to Paris. Okay, that's that was the trip. <laughs> it all jumbled up in my brain. It was crazy. I had the time of my life, and like I'm so grateful for it. It was good for us as a couple, but it was also bad for us, I guess, because like we got really codependent, I think. I think it was just like a, really a combination of being together 24-7, like not having space from each other, being freaking hungry, hangry all the time, um, tired as hell, and just constantly moving around and like if little things would go wrong, we would take it out on each other. We got in our second real fight when we were traveling through France. And it ended up being like super horrible and awkward because it was like two or three days. Like I didn't want to talk to him at all. I just wanted to like get away from him, but I couldn't. It's just hard when you're kind of like a new couple as it is. Like there was one night, I think we were in Lille and he went out with some friends and I was like, I'm not going. I'm just going to stay here and watch Netflix. Like let's separate for a bit. And that actually did a lot of good for us. And especially when we got to Germany, like with my family, we stayed for a week in the same place. So we were really able to like relax and chill and everything was like really, really good. We had the last show in Paris. It was the best one yet. I had a lot of fun. And then the night after that was our last night, like seeing each other before he was going to leave. So like he, we both, we separated in Paris. I went back to Germany. He flew home to Quebec and it sucked. I was happy, but I was also like really sad because I didn't have him anymore. After being together for so long and becoming like so like codependent, especially because we were in France a lot and I don't speak French and he did. So he literally was ordering for me in restaurants like I was so dependent on him for everything that I started to kind of like lose myself and I it took me a, a while to be able to be comfortable going places by myself so I think that when he left I just kind of like started to panic because I didn't know like how to do anything again like without him and not only that, but just like missing each other. <laughs> okay. No, don't face ID me right now. I'm trying to look at myself. <laughs> so basically, I don't know. I just kind of kept like flipping out on him over like dumb shit. Like just getting jealous about like everything. <laughs> and I think this is something that he never really realized. I thought I was kind of alone in it until I started talking to some of the other girlfriends who were dating people in the same industry. And they told me that like they would fight over the exact same things. I mean, it's literally their job to like go out and throw parties and party all night. And there's these girls that of course are going to be all over you. And it's always in the back of our minds, you know, like you, should, you just never know. Like it's not that you don't trust them. It's that you don't trust these people that they're around, especially when you know that their friends do stupid shit all the time. We're having a hard time trusting. And so we kind of flip out. And they think that we don't trust them and they take it personally because they're not doing anything wrong. And the fact that I'm, I was so far away, like I'm in Germany, he's in Quebec. If something happened, I would have never found out. That fight kind of escalated into, he stressed me out, I can't make music, I'm always upset. And then that ended up being the end of our relationship. Like he was just like, I can't like keep doing this because I can't be unproductive and you're making me unproductive. I have this crazy dream and I'm chasing it and I just can't have that. And I'm like, fuck. Anyways, that like completely derailed, derailed everything in my mind because my mind just, I was so sad that I couldn't enjoy the reason why I went there in the first place. My whole family, besides Caitlin, came up to visit and we traveled around everywhere. was just like upset and Michael was back like posting all these Instagram stories, having a grand old time and I'm watching and I'm like, do you even care? <laughs> 
and I know it's just like it's it's like dumb stuff. Like it, it's not even relevant, and it doesn't say anything about anyone's character. Like that's just what happens. But it like really hurt because I felt like it was so out of the blue. Like because I've had times where I thought that maybe we should take some time apart. I've had times where he's driven me completely crazy. But I would have never ever like thought okay, well, that's it, this is the end, I'm ending this between us. Because we were literally, like, perfect when we were together. Like, we fought, yes, but, like, who doesn't? Relationships don't always come so easily. And in the beginning, it was a lot of fun, and it was really great, and it was easy, and it just happened. But then, like, as we started getting into real shit and real arguments, and, like, real things were happening that we needed to talk and communicate and figure it out like the actual underlying reasons behind it he didn't see that and he just wanted to just drop it anytime we were to talk about the breakup he's giving me a completely different reason why we shouldn't be together so it's like it doesn't even make sense like the reason is just stupid it was like a fight that escalated into a blow up breakup and then that was it and then, and then I'm left sitting there like the fuck like what the fuck just happened I saw him one like for a few days after that and uh it just wasn't the same like in a way it was because I feel like sometimes we would forget and we would be normal and then all of a sudden it just floods back and you're like wait no this isn't this is broken and I think that he wanted to push himself away from me so bad that he wasn't able, he, he didn't want to accept the fact that, okay, like, she's here, she's trying to fix things, because he voiced everything that made him unhappy, and I was like, okay, I was like, shit, I'm so sorry, like, I had no idea that I was doing this to you at all, I thought any, nothing I said would have, was affecting you at all, because you didn't act like it was affecting you, it was just that communication, we didn't have that communication, and once he finally opened up and told me all of the things that were wrong and I was willing to work on all the things that were wrong but he wasn't like open to seeing that and he was just like no 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 like this can't work this can't work this can't work maybe in a few months maybe after the summer maybe in November no I, it was just <sighs> exhausting so that's why I'm kind of confused now about like where am I supposed to go because our last night together in Paris he was like I want you to come to Quebec when you're done with all of your travels. I want you to stay as long as you want. Try and work here. I'm like, I can't work here. I can't even speak the language. And he's like, well, we'll figure it out. Like, we'll figure it out together. We'll turn the spare room into, like, your room for whatever you want to do. It's what I wanted, you know? I wanted to spend as much time with him as possible because I was in love with him. So I said, okay. Like, we'll try and make this work, but we're just going to give it until the end of the year. And if I'm not, like, picking up on anything, like, if I if I feel like I'm still, like, at the bottom, then I'm going to have to move on and, keep, and figure something else out. But that's what was going to happen. So I really went from, you know, thinking, okay, cool, like, we're going to do this together. And, and it would have been, like, really, really good, I feel, because we both don't have, like, obligations that we have to be in certain places 24 7 like for work it's really nice having someone in that same area as you and that was actually one of the questions i got like date about dating and dating in your career path because like we weren't in the same career path but the things tied in really well together because he's in music and so i did the tour with him but i could film for him and take photos for him and all that so like everything kind of like we can kind of balance off of each other and work off of each other. And in that aspect, I think it's really good. I think it's important. I'll go ahead and address that question. Dating in your career path is a really good thing. As long as you don't, like, find a way to make it competitive. If you both work from home, you can travel all the time together whenever you want. And that leads into another question. Like, how does YouTube and Instagram affect your relationships? My boyfriends have always been, like, really supportive of it. But... There is a YouTube problem. You feel like you're putting on a show sometimes. And so sometimes you get wrapped up in, am I doing this for my life or am I doing this for my viewers? Candace and Casey Neistat talked about this on one of their podcasts. She said they were getting a new couch 
and she was thinking, would this couch look good in our house? And he was thinking, is buying this couch good content for the vlog? You have to put the line in between your relationship and YouTube, but also it's hard when you want to document your life. So that's why it kind of like when I went to Europe, and especially being with him, I wanted to take a step back. When I first started the traveling, it was a little bit different and I was like trying to vlog everywhere and vlog everything and document my whole experience. But then as soon as I went to Europe, I was like, you know what, I'm so tired of this. It's draining me. I'm not having the best time because I can't soak up all the experiences that I'm having. So that's when I decided that I was going to like not vlog in Europe and I, I mean like I would vlog but it would be specific days and then we would have a day to like actually explore and do things we wanted to do a lot of the times we would be so exhausted we would just lay in bed and do nothing all day but it was good having someone who understood it it's actually good because it segues into the last question that i'm going to answer is youtube your full-time job and that's something that i used to wish but i don't wish it anymore youtube is not my full-time job i absolutely adore youtube Obviously, or I wouldn't be sitting here for the past like hour talking to you guys. Do I want that to be the only thing that I'm good at and doing? No, I don't. I would like to not have the camera on me 24-7. <laughs> and I would just like to explore like different industries and ideas. Um, so let's talk for a little bit in the last minutes we have here about what I do for a job, what I do for money, what you guys can do to make money working for yourself. The first thing, obviously, is like YouTube, like Google AdSense, I make some money from that, but also um, collabing with brands on YouTube and on Instagram as well. So basically, they, you do like paid promotions and brands will pay you to take a picture with whatever, do a review of whatever, and I'm, I'm doing a lot of them right now, and I'm sorry, because I know, like, the, it's not, like, the best quality content to watch, but it's because I'm home right now, and I can actually get packages in the mail, and review them, and do them, and get them out, and make some freaking money while I'm here, so stop complaining, this is all gonna be good in the long run, so one of the biggest ways that I'm making money right now is actually from teaching English online. A lot of people do this when they are traveling because you can set up a classroom and teach online anywhere and they pay you really, really good and you have whatever hours you want to work, you can work. You can work as much or as little as you want. It's with um, VIP Kid, and I'm going to like link all of the good stuff in the description. So if you're interested in that, you can jump on in there. So I got this job because I wanted to be able to make money and travel, and it's not like a long-term goal for me to do. I love it so much because I've always had like a soft spot for kids, and I've always loved working with kids. I was a nanny for years before, but I have more, I know I have more potential than that. So this is a good way for me to make money while I'm traveling and have like a steady thing while I build up my brand and stuff like that. Another thing that I do a lot of that I've been doing for a while is like photography and videography, obviously for businesses. This is something that's hardest to do while on the go because it's hard to like find people unless you're actively like looking. But now that I'm back here for a little bit, and I am lucky enough to have these people that like me enough that they stick with me and ask me when I'm going to be in town next and book things for whenever I'm in town next. Um, I do this newsletter for a company and I've been doing that for years. It's just like a once a month thing that I do for them. Little stuff like that that adds up. Also, for some reason, I've been like super, super lucky in a weird way. So before I quit my job to travel the world, I was managing a salon and somehow like everywhere i go these salons just like fall into my lap like even in germany there was a salon that spoke english and because their primary market was like americans and then now that i'm here i have a connection with a girl who's at a salon that's totally revamping the whole thing and they need my help and then lastly like i said before i do have like crazier dreams that I haven't really talked about on here that I don't really talk to with a lot of people that have been on my mind for years 
and I've just been really too scared to make it happen or too busy to make it happen. You know, I wasn't expecting to be in this place, but I'm going to make the most of it and I'm just going to go ahead and buckle down and start this thing that I've been wanting to do for so long. It's going to be really, really great. <laughs> I'm like really, really excited about it. And it's going to be a lot of work like up front and first, but like then I'll be able to like continue my travels and stuff. And I didn't think that I could do it by myself, but now I have this like boost of confidence and I'm ready to like run into this thing head first. And maybe it's not going to be like huge and gigantic and blow up, be crazy, but it's going to be really good for me to have like a project baby, like a brand company of my own that I can actually like put my heart and soul into and love it and do all the things that I'm really good at all combined into this thing. I'm just trying to keep it kind of down the down low right now by not telling y'all exactly, but expect it to tie in to my YouTube videos in the next couple of months coming up. But yeah, so I think that's it. That was like a very intense I only answered a very few amount of questions Q&A, but I wanted to like spill all the good, juicy, life-altering changes that have been happening. And I'm really excited to edit this because it's like an hour and a half. If you've watched this far, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to give the video a big thumbs up, subscribe, join the family, comment down below, follow me on Instagram so that you can be a part of the next Q&A. And yeah, that's it. Peace out, dogs.